Welcome back! We tried to venture deeper into this island, but were stopped by five gnomes who called themselves the guardians of this island. More interestingly, however, is that they said that somebody told them to watch for a foreign man. And we saw a cutscene where Alhazred told that strange, silly uh, little man who got drunk of eating a mint to go to the other islands and tell them something. Could they have been warned about us? Seems uh, possible. Anyway, the gnomes showed up when we tried to go uh, east. Maybe if we go into the jungle, we'll be more lucky. Alexander hears someone coming. Or not. Five fierce guards of the isle we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he. With ears and nose, tongue, hands and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If man it be, then man it dies. Old Tom Troll, smell your smell. Do that which you do so well. Okay, well... If he smells us, we uh, are in trouble. So we need to um, trick him somehow, and after him all of the four other uh, gnomes, who each use a different sense to try and ascertain whether or not we are a man. But unfortunately we have nothing uh, that can be used to uh, trick the uh, gnome with the giant nose. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to die, because this game, um, again, is a much nicer game than King's Quest V was. It actually allows you to escape by using the magic map. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Okay, well, since we can't go any further on the Isle of Wonder, let's check out the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. See, we avoided death there. Hmm. Seems we're surrounded by cliffs. That's going to be uh, difficult to get any further. If you read the guidebook, um, it actually confirms that where the ferry drops you off is um, also a small beach surrounded by cliffs, so that might be the same place. But it said that uh, almost immediately you would be greeted by a welcoming committee from the Winged Ones, the people who live on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. However, it doesn't look like they're uh, showing up. I guess um, since the islands are feuding, they may not be so keen to welcome visitors anymore. Additionally, maybe they only show up when you arrive by ferry. I mean, since we use a magic map to come here, it's not as if they saw us coming. Alexander is standing on the small sandy cove of a rocky island. Around him, sheer granite cliffs block any further movement north, east, or west. To the south, he is blocked by the sea. Well, I guess if you wanted to sunbathe somewhere in privacy, this would be the place. Well, since we can't get off the beach, let's see what's on the beach. There's an ugly flower growing near the base of the cliff. Let's take a look. Alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideously strong skunk-like odor. For a moment, he can smell nothing else. Hmm, a flower that produces an enormously strong stench that overpowers all other smells. That sounds like something we could use against um, the gnome on the Isle of Wonder. I want to try that out, but let's first uh, look at this uh, very obvious feather that's lying over here. Alexander notices an unusually large coal black feather lying on the beach. Neat. 
Alexander takes the feather. Wonder what kind of bird it's from. Alexander is carrying an unusually large black feather. I guess it's from an unusually large black bird. I don't know. Let's head back Alexander to Alexander pulls out his magic map. Let's head back to um, the Isle of Wonder and try out um, that flower, uh, see if we can trick that gnome, and hopefully we'll be able to trick the other five as well. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. I think I have everything I need. Though I could be wrong. I'm gonna save just in case. Even though you, I know you can escape, even if I did forget something. I might uh, fail to do so, by mistake, so saving is never a bad idea in a Sierra game, after all. Alexander hears someone coming. Go on, do your best, I'm ready for you. I fear scars of the eye we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he. With ears and nose, tongue, hands and eyes, its nature cannot be disguised. If man it be, then man it dies. Old Tom Troll, smell your smell. Do that which you do so well. It's a good thing that apparently uh, the smelling gnome and all of the other gnomes, except for the last one, don't actually use their eyes. Actually, we could easily be defeated here if they just you uh, all uh, just check us out all at the same time rather than one after the other. But they don't, so that's good for us. Let's try out this flower of stench. Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with the jumbo nose. Tom Troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower tis all and nothing more. Listen, hark you, Grovenor, do your duty as you swore. With your ears, please tell us more. Man, that guy's all ears. An odd-looking gnome stands before Alexander. He has incredibly huge ears. Now, um... Uh, I think if you actually have, if you have the flute from, uh from the pawn shop, you can try and play it here, but he'll be all like, oh, uh, men play flutes, so it must be a man. But, uh, much like uh, Sing Sing, this gnome can be tricked by a mechanical nightingale, which means that although his ears are good, apparently he doesn't know what a real nightingale sounds like. Alexander winds the tin nightingale and plays it for the gnome with the monumental ears. He's boogieing. A nose is not a way to spy. My ears cannot be told a lie. A nightingale is all there be. No man is near, and so say me. Let's see what's next. Taste rum trump that we might know whether the friend or whether foe. Yikes! A squatty little gnome stands before Alexander. He has a huge mouth and a very long curled up tongue. He must be popular with the ladies. Perhaps we can trick him using a mint. Alexander holds the mint out for the gnome with the gigantic mouth. Grump Frump knows a tasty treat. It matters not what others bleat. 
No danger is this one so sweet. Trilly Dilly, use your hands. Is it beast or is it man? A gnome with very large hands stands in front of Alexander. Why does he normally wear gloves? I mean, does his power work like Rogue from the X-Men or something? Or would he just be overpowered by the sensations of touch? Because his hands are so sensitive. Now you might think you could use the feather, but if you hold out the feather, he'll just ignore it and touch you instead. What we uh, can, however, do is use the rabbit's foot. Alexander holds the rabbit foot out for the gnome with the huge hands. Be all you mad? What aileth thee? A bunny can't trill merrily. A hare does not at all taste sweet. A rabbit here is all we greet. Old Bill Batter, never fatter. Vision can resolve this matter. Look you now and end this chatter. Okay. A gnome with gigantic eyes is standing before Alexander. The final gnome, who apparently uses vision to uh, detect what's standing in front of him, which, you know, they might have done up front, would have saved a lot of time. Um, unfortunately, he keeps his eyes closed most of the time. But how do, do we... Um, Trick him is the question. It's not as if we have a disguise. And technically, um, although the game doesn't let you do it, I suppose if you could um, use the, if if the game actually made sense, you would be able to use the map now. In which case, you'd be gone, uh, letting the gnome think there's nothing there, and then they shouldn't come back. But um, that doesn't actually work. What does work, however, is the uh, invisible ink, which we can use to disappear, as we saw when we spilled it before. Alexander pours the contents of the empty-looking ink bottle over himself. By all that's beauteous, fair, and sightly, four morons do I sleep with nightly. There's nothing there at all, I say. Enough of this. Let's now away! Alexander did it! He's fooled the guards! Well, that sure was an easier way to turn invisible than uh, that spell that only worked with mist and fire. Then again, it doesn't last very long. And I think the bottle's empty now. In fact, we don't even have the bottle anymore. Even though Alexander originally picked it up because he thought a bottle would be useful because he didn't know there was anything in it. Anyway. Now that we have tricked the gnomes, they will not be back and we are free to explore the rest of the island, which we'll do in the next video. Thank you.